presentation. And as you all know, we're, we're celebrating uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. And that was originally, it was a week. You know, Lyndon Johnson gave, uh, gave him a week. And then he said, well, uh, Ronald Reagan, so we gotta give these Latinos a month. A week's not enough. You know, they love to party, Latinos. You know, somebody gets okay. a new pair of shoes, they have a party, you know? It's, okay. It's, 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 they love getting together as families. So Ronald Reagan gave us a month, and it's between September 15th and October 15th. And, you know, people are always amazed when you talk about the Hispanic market. I'm in the marketing business. We do marketing conferences. And they think the Hispanic market's Mexico and Puerto Rico. They don't know. They, there's, a, there's a lot of co a countries that make up the Hispanic market. So we have this lovely uh, piece we put together. Uh, I think we're going to be able to play them, and I'm going to wait, wait for my director there, my producer. And then the money guy, he's got the money behind the thing. Are we, how are we looking, Rico? Yeah. Well, here's a piece we put together. Uh, it's called The Latinization of America. I think we're going to be putting some music with it. de mis sueños yo te vi sobre el mar blanca y desnuda sobre mi paz sobre ti yo vuelvo niña, niña, niña niña de mi sexo sé que vas a jugar con mis dos manos sé que no irás eso que yo quiero, imagínate que me voy muriendo, imagínate ya no estoy.
Rico for helping us put that together. Uh, that nice piece, Rico, thank you. And Pablo, is, is that our one? Oh, one. Hi, one. Um, well, that's, um, that's just an inter introduction to our award ceremony. You know, 15 years ago, we decided that uh, along with La Familia, we would have a um, Hispanic Heritage Award uh, during our event. So, you know, it, it, it happened and we've been, over the years, I've honored a lot of great individuals and organizations that have really um, paid particular attention to the Latino culture. And uh, it's amazing that in our community we have so many uh, individuals and organizations that really go unrecognized for all the great work they do. And it's not easy volunteering. You know, volunteering isn't, um, isn't something that just happens. You know, a lot of times you're away from your families. You're away from a lot of uh, events that happen uh, where instead of going to the family events, you're going to these organizational things and everything. But that's what this country's about, isn't it? America. You know, where we, we volunteer and where we want to uh, reach out and help people. So our, our first... Um, our first uh, Hispanic Heritage Award is going to Alejandro Quintana, who was born uh, in uh, Miami Beach, Florida in 1987. He enlisted into the active duty army at the age of 18 after completing high school. He trained into the military occupational specialty, 14T, Patriot Missile Launching Station Operator Maintainer. His first overseas assignment was in Suwon, Korea, where he helped provide air and missile support to our allied forces and assets in the area. His other overseas assignments included a separate tour to Osan, Korea, and Bahrain. Sergeant Quintena spent nine years on active duty. His last two years on active duty were spent being a recruiter in North, in North California. He was transferred to the Minnesota Army National Guard in 2015. Being able to give back to the community has always been at the top of the list for wanting to serve in the military for Staff Sergeant Quintana. He is currently recruiting at the U of M office and is working with young men and women in order to give them the same opportunities he's had to serve. And by the way, I, I think we all know that uh, in the military, uh, whether it's uh, it's uh, it's wartime or peacetime, you know the, the the average age of of a lot of people that serve are you know 18 or 19 or 20 years old. I mean that's that's an amazing uh, sacrifice over the years. When um, as a parent, you could have a 19 year old son going off to war, and um, unfortunately a lot of times they don't return. And that's been the sacrifice I think that we really want to. Um, honor Alejandro and the rest of the uh, people that serve in the armed forces. And so with that, I want to bring up Alejandro Quintana. I just saw Alejandro, he's one of the tallest Latinos I've seen in the bit. Um, well, I was 5'9 when I went in the military, but I, I got out two years later, it was 5'7", so I, I guess it was my trying to hide from the bullets, I guess. But here's the La Familia 2017 Hispanic Heritage Award. In recognition of your commitment to your Hispanic heritage, culture, and community, and your dedication to serving your country as a member of the Minnesota Army National Guard, also for your love of family, friends, and your country. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Hispanic community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Alejandro Quintana from the Hispanic Heritage Award Selection Committee. Alejandro, congratulations.
Um, being Hispanic and being in the military is definitely a little bit different. It's typically English speaking um, people that serve with you, so a little bit of diversity uh, definitely goes a long way. The military is really great about breaking down those walls of diversity. We have people of all walks of life that it kind of forces us to work together. So I really appreciate the military for that. It's definitely helped me see the way different people think and different people live their lifestyles. And I owe all my success in the military. I have a, a nice home now, a, a beautiful wife that I've met through the military. I have a son. All my success is directly owed to the military. I appreciate it so much. And I definitely appreciate this award and be recognized for this. Thank you very much. God bless you. And um, I think for our next time, uh, uh, Dallas, I think we have to speak into the microphone for the video. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, uh, this is a reminder for any of our other uh, awardees, I guess we have to speak into the microphone. But, uh, well, thanks, Alejandro, and, and, and um, thank you for all you do, and, and uh, Eduardo and the rest of your team here. Thank you. Um, the achievement gap. Unfortunately for Minnesota, you know, we have, we have one of the largest achievement gaps in the country. Imagine, we have the worst Latino graduation rate in the country. Minnesota, it's a, it's a shame, really. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say it for our state. And second in the country to African Americans. You know, our, our Latino kids are dropping out by, by the thousands around our country. It, this is really a crisis. It's a, it's a national crisis that I, I guess isn't recognized as one, but for us Latinos, uh, as we talk about us being the largest uh, group in the country now, the minority group, we better pay attention to that. We can't have us being the largest group and at the same time with half of these young millennials can't read or write in English and that type of thing. So. We need schools that are going to help our kids. We need schools that are going to pay particularly um, um, and look at our culture and be able to understand what, what's the best way to teach our kids. And thank goodness our next awardee has been doing just that. Uh, Risen Christ Catholic School in Minneapolis is a K-8 bilingual, multicultural, and financially accessible school of excellence educating children in mind, body, and spirit to live and lead in the example of Jesus Christ. Of their current student body, 88% of the students are Latino. Risen Christ Catholic School was formed in 1993 to preserve and strengthen Catholic education for new generations of children in the heart of South Minneapolis. There is no other Catholic school in Minnesota that is doing or can do what Risen Christ does. They serve more students of color than any other Catholic school. They serve more children living in poverty than any other Catholic school. Minnesota has the nation's worst achievement gap, but they are closing the gap. And most importantly, they are bringing the children closer to Christ. We are here today to honor Risen Christ, their leadership, staff, families, and students. So I'll put a hand for our Hispanic Heritage Award to Risen Christ Catholic School. President Michael Rogers. In recognition of your commitment to the Hispanic heritage, culture, and community, and your dedication and outstanding leadership to providing a first-class education to many members of the Hispanic community. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Hispanic community in Minnesota, 
This commendation is presented to Risen Christ Catholic School. Thank you, Rick. Uh, thank you so much for this, this wonderful award recognizing uh, the very hard work that our teachers and our staff do every day at Risen Christ. Um, as Rick mentioned, we've been around since 1993, and so this is our 25th year uh, as, a, as a school. And our, our student population has changed quite a bit since 1993, to the point where we're very proud now, uh, as Rick said, that 88% of our, our students are Latino. And our program is really geared towards those students and their families, uh, to the point that in the, in the lower grades, we're educating these children in Spanish, which is their native language for most of them, but also in English. And doing that has, has given these students a great academic uh, background. It's preparing them uh, for high school, college, and beyond. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with the success that we've had and, and the, um, the results. And as Rick mentioned, we are closing the achievement gap one student at a time and, and working towards continual growth uh, every year. And I want to recognize just two, two of the folks that are here with us today from Risen Christ. Uh, Bonnie O'Connor is the chair of our board of directors. And so I'm grateful for her to, for coming out today. And we have a fantastic group of uh, 20 board members who are from the community here, who are business leaders, who are just uh, families that, that live in the area, and who are working hard to make sure that we can provide a Catholic education that is affordable. We work with all families uh, to make sure that their children can come to our school. We're open to everybody, and we turn nobody away. Unless our, our classrooms are full, which now they are starting to get full, um, because the word is really getting out. And the person who's really responsible for getting the word out about our school is Marisa Rivera, uh, who many of you know, I think. You see Marisa around uh, at all the events in Minneapolis here. Um, and she does a wonderful job of sharing the good news of our school and, and telling people about it and how they can become a part of our community. So we're very um, honored to be a part of this uh, Minneapolis community and the Latino community and um, very honored for this award. So thank you very much. Thank you. you know, we want to remind uh, our, our awardees that we're going to have uh, uh, some photos together. So. If everyone can see it till the end, and, and then the video also. Thank you. Yeah, our next awardee is, is um, Puerto Rican, Elsa Vega Perez, is um, receiving our Hispanic Heritage Award. I know she's quite concerned with, uh, with what's happening in Puerto Rico. You know, recently, her daughter, and Maria Isa was married there. They were married on a wonderful beach there with all their family and friends. And uh, I understand that's probably gone by now. So Elsa now, Elsa's not with us today. But um, you know, Elsa Vega was really a, a special uh, friend of the community. Uh, pretty much known professionally, she was a, a senior project consultant a diversity expert and social justice advocate with over 20 years experience in philanthropy, nonprofit, and the public sector. She's been a leader in creating opportunities for Latinos in philanthropy, education, and as a member of the Council of Foundations of Hispanics in Philanthropy. Elsa was instrumental in creating two Latino cultural focused charter schools in Minnesota. An average community volunteer Vega Perez is co-founder and director emeritus of the Arco Ears Center for the Performing Arts, a nonprofit arts cultural organization that blends the arts and history of the African and Puerto Rican culture. She has a bachelor's degree in human services from Metropolitan State University and has performed postgraduate studies at Bernard Barch, Baruch, City University of New York, Harvard University, John F. Kennedy School, the National Hispanic Leadership Institute, and the Center for Creative Leadership. Elsa, as we know, has supported and led various projects in the area of philanthropy, social justice, education, youth, and communities of color, and is truly a leader in the community. And um, 
You know, Elsa has been, uh, I think she's one of the, the first Puerto Rican families to arrive here in Minnesota many years ago. And uh, from the very outset, you know, she's been active. Uh, she's been very vocal. Um, definitely a leader in, in being able to present our issues to organizations and to making sure they do something about that. And I think that's going to be uh, in, in one of our legacies is that this whole thing about philanthropy, about informing Latinos how to give back. You know, that's, that's part of being American, giving back. And I think she's educated as well in, in, in her, her programs that she started at the foundations that really strive. So she's not be able to be with us, but we're so pleased to have uh, Maria Isa Perez, her daughter, to accept this uh, award on behalf of Elsa Maria. In recognition of your commitment to your Hispanic heritage, culture, and community, and your dedication and outstanding leadership in the many civic and social organizations you have led and served, also for your love of family, friends, and your country, with this appreciation of the Hispanic community in Minnesota, this accommodation is presented to Elsa Vega Perez. Maria, thank you in accepting this on behalf. On behalf of my, mi madre, mi mamá, mi reina, uh, she wants to thank La Familia and thank, thank you, Rick Aguilar, for always being there, a hand of support of not only in the Latino community, but personally. Uh, it takes a village. Those are the words that my mother raised me on. And the village of Latinos in Minnesota is something that she has dedicated her life since before I was born. Coming from the projects, the Roots projects of the Lower East Side's Puerto Rican community with her parents who migrated to the mainland in 1948, I know the history of my family because of my mother. And she wanted me to share with you how important it is for not just her history, but the histories of Puerto Ricans right now that are going through this catastrophe. That it's going to take a lot of villages, not just on the island, but outside, to help. Puerto Rico is America. And if it was to be a state, it would be ranked as 29th in population. That's how many Americans right now need our help. There's no power. My mother, myself, we have not been able to contact any of our family members and hoping in good faith that they're okay. She wanted me to share with you because through all of her works, she uh, started the Boricua Foundation, which I am happily uh, succeeding, uh, a fund of Boricua, a fund of the St. Paul Foundations, where we started a relief, the Fondo Boricua Hurricane Relief, where you can make donations and St. Paul Foundations will be distributing those to the organizations that we know, those people that we hope that they're okay, um, and that we can continue to have that pride in the island that we know as the enchanted island of Paraiso, paradise, which has been destroyed. I know I'm talking a lot about Puerto Rico, but that's what my mom talks about. You know, I've been accepting awards for my mom for a, while, a long time. She's always busy and running around as a little girl. And you hear those stories from maybe people who aren't raised by mothers with that occupation or who sacrifice that same dedication and their time. And I was proud. And uh, I always tell my mom, you put a lot of big shoes. <laughs> getting emotional because I've experienced the work. I've lived through the work. I was in her, her womb while she was the first 
elected the first time, like the first Latina to work in the state for equal opportunity so that our gente, whether we're dealing with the issues of immigration, whether we're dealing with gentrification, those issues that hit us first. My mom was there to make sure that we have jobs, that we have education here in the state of Minnesota. And those days where maybe your mom wasn't at your recitals or missed a few basketball games, it never affected me growing up. I always knew that my mom was always there, is always there. And boy, are those tacos big to fill in now. Not only is she a wonderful leader in the community, but she's a wonderful mom. And um, on behalf of El Fondo Boricua, on behalf of all those places that Rick list, listed down, thank you for acknowledging my mother because I do every day and it's great to see everyone else do as well. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, and um, you know, our hearts go out again to uh, Puerto Rico, and um, you know, keep us updated now on, on any of uh, the family members you can reach and, and, and all of that. Um, our next uh, award winner is a, a wonderful woman that I met um, a few years back. And uh, you know, another thing that goes unrecognized really is the, the, the professional uh, women that we have in our community here. And, you know, of course, in the, in the um, being in the marketing business, which I've been in 21 years, we know that in the Latino community, the women make the buying decisions. They always have. You know, they've got the husband sitting there watching uh, soccer. You know, he doesn't know. He doesn't know anything. It's the women who are the marketing leaders and, and the decision makers in the Latino community. And, and a, as we see, uh, in the U.S. now, the leading group opening businesses are Latinas. They're the fastest growing business segment are the Latinos. Entrepreneurs, uh, people that, that um, you know, being entrepreneur is easy, as we were just describing about volunteers. You know, it's long hours, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of heartache. You know, I put on the event here today, we don't see a lot of people in, there's a lot of heartache. And there's a lot of anxieties. But um, I, I think that one, one of the things that entrepreneurs have in common is that they'll take a risk and they'll work hard. And, and that's, uh, that's our next, our next re uh, recipient, Amalia Moreno Damgar. Uh, she's an award-winning and best-selling author and a Guatemala-American professional chef born and raised in Guatemala City. Amalia is also a spokesperson a bilingual food and culture consultant and founder of Amalia LLC, a business designed to help individuals and companies develop a better understanding and appreciation of Latin cultural nuance through healthy gourmet cuisine. She is a graduate of the Cordon Bleu and is currently writing her second book. Her first book, Amalia's Guatemalan Kitchen Gourmet Cuisine with a Cultural Flair, has won nine international awards, including Best Foreign Cuisine Book USA by Gourmand World Cookbooks. Amalia is a contributing writer for Guatemala's Review Magazine and Guatemala's leading newspaper, Siglo Uno, and for Latino American Today, a Twin Cities publication. Prior to this, Amalia has had an executive career in international banking, and earned a master's in international business and culture from St. Louis University, and also founded Women's Entrepreneurs of Minnesota, a nonprofit in the Twin Cities that fosters women entrepreneurship through networking and leadership education. And we have to agree that Guatemala's loss was Minnesota's gain. Amali is indeed a business leader and the pride of the Latino community. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the Hispanic Heritage Award to Amali Moreno Damga. In recognition of your commitment to your Hispanic heritage and culture and community and your dedication and outstanding leadership to the many civic and social organizations you have led and served, 
also for your love of family, friends, and your country. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Hispanic community in Minnesota, this accommodation is presented to Amalia Moreno Damgard. It is a pleasure to be here today. Thank you, Rick Aguilar. Thank you, La Familia. And thank you, Latino American today. We all have a story to tell, don't we? And mine began in this country so many years ago as an immigrant from Guatemala. When I started speaking English as a second language, I had an accent. I still have an accent. I look different, I stand out in um, areas where the Latino population are not uh, very prominent. And this is where I first began my story here in the United States. So the first time that someone heard me speak with an accent, they asked me where I was from, and I said, I am from Guatemala. And then they said, where is that in Mexico? So I said, I have to do something about this someday. I began a first career in international banking, and then I got married and I had a son, and then I totally switched careers to pursue my true passion, which is food and culture. And I have been working in food and culture for a long time now to help people develop a better understanding and appreciation of Latin cultures through gourmet cuisine. My aim is to bridge the knowledge gap of Latin culture in the United States by educating not only individuals but also corporations through writing, professional speaking, and through the media. And being a voice, bilingual voice, that is to Latinos because we have great contributions to make to the United States through art, through culture, and beyond. So thank you, Rick Aguilar. Thank you, Latino American today. Thank you for the community. Thank you to the community for this award. It is a recognition for my work in the community. And my work began here in the Twin Cities, also with knowing Rick better. Um, he's a great leader as well. and. Um, Having been associated with you has been a great gain for me as well, and we support you, and we thank you for the work that you do in the community as well. Thank you for the award, and thank you everyone for being here today. Well, and, and, and you, have, you have to taste her food. I mean, it's amazing that the, the work that she does and uh, all the events she's, she's catered and, and, uh, and made uh, so much better. You know, our, our, um, our final award, um, we're waiting for another person to arrive, and so this, uh, this might be our final award. Actually, actually it's our first international award. You know that, um, and, and it happened. It happened because of a good friend of ours. But I thought that um, you know, so often a lot of our, our friends have um, associates and family in, in other countries, in other places uh, around the country. And um, I think it's always good for us to hear uh, about these individuals and what they do. Uh, and um, either it's from their home country, in this case Nicaragua. Or living in Florida, and um, uh, we reached out to a good friend of ours, Esperanza Godetto Anderson is here, and she told me about a friend that was coming to visit her, and had visited her before. But um, one, I think she's, um, um, as you'll see in her introduction, uh, she's involved with a um, really important organization that is doing some great work around the world. So um, our award would be going to Mary Elena Calera de Rana, 
And uh, Mary Lynn is, is a well-known, widely respected, and most gifted community leader in Nicaragua, and also in Miami, Florida, where she's lived for more than a decade. She is an organizer and leader who has been instrumental in creating and developing many initiatives for the Red Cross of Nicaragua. She is also very active in promotion and expansion of the Pan American Roundtable in her native country and also in Miami. Her energy, enthusiasm, and commitment have brought success and recognition to both organizations. Mary Elena's passion for the Red Cross of Nicaragua, RCN, goes back to 1962, when right out of high school, she joined the organization as a member and as a contributor, and since then became more involved in everything related to the Red Cross. In 1963, she was a member of the committee that organized the first national collect for the RCN. In 1964, she was elected queen of the Red Cross of Nicaragua. She was a member of the board of the directors of the Cruz Heroica, a Red Cross initiative. In 1968, she was elected member of the Red Cross National Council of Nicaragua, where she held several leadership positions. She has represented the Red Cross of Nicaragua in seven, several national and international conferences, has taught seminars and given speeches on different topics. In the mid-90s, she worked for the Red Cross as director of development. Upon her retirement, she has continued to work and volunteer for the national campaign to raise funds to support the Red Cross of Nicaragua. Over the years, Maria Elena has chaired numerous conferences, committees, and volunteered for various organizations. But her main passion since 1962, right out of high school, has been the Red Cross. So ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand for Mary Elena Galera de Rana. Can you help her up, Rico? In recognition of your commitment to your Hispanic heritage, culture, and community, and your dedication and outstanding leadership to the many civic and social organizations you have led and served in Nicaragua and the United States, also through your love of family, friends, and your country. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Hispanic community in Minnesota, this commendation is presented to Maria Elena Calera de Rana. Congratulations, Maria. lovely introduction and good afternoon to all of you. I believe that to serve is a gift that God gave us, and to help others is a blessing. My 57 years of serving others through the Red Cross of Nicaragua has been an amazing and rewarding experience. I always say that the Red Cross is like a worm that goes into your heart and never go out. When I run into people that send me for what I have done for them, I tell them that it's not to me who they have to sign, but the Red Cross that always that allows me to serve them. And I am going to do a little advertising for our Red Cross, Minnesota Red Cross. They are in the fundraising for the people of Mexico and Puerto Rico. We can share part of our money to help the others. Then I invite you to visit the Red Cross booth and help them. I have worked through the Red Cross of Nicaragua and the Pan American Round Table, that is a cultural association without thinking about the recognition or honor 
But when I receive a reconciliation, this is ha it's a happy moment that brings up my feeling of eternal gratitude. I am today in front of all of you receiving with humility and profound gratitude this international reconciliation given by Aguilar Production, the publishers of the Latin American Today. I am also grateful, very grateful, to my friend Esperanza Guerrero Anderson and Larry for nominating me for this award. I'm very, very grateful to my elementary school friends, Maritza, Carlota, and Ligia, who came from Nicaragua and Boston to be with me on this important moment in my life. I am deeply grateful and from the bottom of my heart, thank you to all of you. Have a great day. Thank you. Now, Maria, before you leave, I, I think we have a representative from the Red Cross. Um, Carrie? Is Carrie here? Uh, Harry, can we? Yeah, okay, Carrie has, has a few words to say. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to follow the Queen of the Red Cross, but uh, uh, I just want to say on behalf of the Minnesota Red Cross and the American Red Cross how incredibly honored we are to have you here and representing our greater Red Cross movement across the world. Um, it's part of the largest humanitarian um, organization and it is just such an incredible honor, um, especially at this time. Um, when we have so many responding to help. And I would say, yes, um, the Red Cross is responding, but so many other organizations were just one of so many that are helping right now. Um, and so please, um, if you do give, um, you know, just give to an organization of your choice, but um, please help. Um, and uh, as, as you know, blood is always needed as well, so it's another way to help. But I just wanted to say thank you. I've had uh, a chance to talk to you a bit. And, uh, just so incredibly honored, and I'm going to give you, um, we have, a, in the Red Cross, if you don't know, it's a very big deal, um, we have pins. And we always, we always share our pins. Um, and so I have a Minnesota Red Cross pin for you. And I also have um, all kinds of, of wonderful Red Cross things for you to take back. Uh, and, and and share with people. So I just wanted, it's a small token of our appreciation and just so honored. So thank you for, thank you for everything. Thank you, I am very pleased to meet you, to talk with all of you and give some ideas that may help to, for the fourth raising of Minnesota Red Cross, which you said, Red Cross is the largest community uh, institution to help people. We give, and then we hope the others give us that we can give the others to with our organization, which I love it all my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bueno, a mí me cuesta más expresarme en inglés que en mi idioma de español y quiero decirles a todos muchísimas gracias que instarlos a que todos nos unamos como voluntarios a cualquier institución que se dedique a ayudar a los demás porque si Dios nos dio algo tenemos el deber de repartirlo de dar algo de eso que Dios nos dio a las otras personas que lo necesitan. Y les juro que les da una satisfacción enorme saber que ayudamos, no importa quién, ni siquiera sabemos a quién nuestra ayuda le llegó, pero en el fondo del corazón sabemos que estamos compartiendo algo que hemos recibido y es lindo dárselo a los demás. Muchísimas gracias.
Wow, this is a pretty emotional day, really. Well, that's what these awards are about, aren't they? Um, we've had the, um, the honor and blessings, really, for uh, Aguilar Productions over the years to you know, hand out a lot of awards to people. And um, I know one thing, you know, it's, uh, it's an amazing a moment for um, a lot of the people, but it's more amazing for us to be able to do this. And look, so last but not least, uh, we have one more award to give out. And, uh, and this is, um, when I say last but not least, because in, in the Twin Cities and uh, in the Midwest, if you're talking about Latino musical entertainment and media, and you mention Maya, Everyone knows who you mean. Maya Santa Maria. And that's our next Hispanic Heritage Award recipient today. Uh, Maya is the owner and founder of Santa Maria Broadcasting, which includes a Nuevo Rodeo, a Rasa 97.5 FM, 1400, 1470 AM, Telemundo, Minnesota, a Nuevo Rodeo restaurant, and it's probably one of the most formal special events, uh, Latino events producers here in the cities. She was born in Albuquerque to college professor parents. Maya came to Minnesota to study anthropology at Hamlin University and later, later Native American and Latin studies at Augsburg. Uh, while here she produced a wonderful story and history of Latino music and musicians in Minnesota. Maya's also performing and had a career founding and fronting the award-winning Sabor Tropical Salsa Orchestra. It was a 13-piece band that was a major attraction in all the Latino and, and even general market clubs here in the cities. Maya got busy on both sides of the stage, which led to buying and starting the musical music, the Minneapolis music uh, venue, El Nuevo Rodeo, and becoming as skilled as a music promoter. Eventually, she was spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to promote her businesses on local Spanish radio. So that prompted her to first lease and then buy broadcast properties, which is now the Rasa Radio. She regards the three-year contract she just negotiated with the Minnesota Twins as a top achievement that happened in 2016. The first year of the contract, the Rasa 1400 1470 AM carried about a third of the Twins games in Spanish broadcast. But beyond all the business success, her heart and soul is with the Latino community and their future here in Minnesota. Maya is concerned and active in the achievement gap and making sure our Latino business community is part of the economic conversation here in the Twin Cities. So today, we honor Maya Santa Maria with our 15th annual La Familia Hispanic Heritage Awards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Maya Santa Maria. <laughs> In recognition of your commitment to your Hispanic heritage and culture and beauty, and your dedication and outstanding leadership to the many civic and social organizations you have led and served. Also for your love of family, friends, and your country. Therefore, with the appreciation of the Hispanic community in Minnesota, this accommodation is presented to Maya Santa Maria. Thank you so much. Well, this uh, award comes after an aftermath of uh, a crazy couple of weeks uh, for the Latino community. I think everyone's heart and mind right now is on our home countries, those of us who still feel that uh, um, the countries that, are, that we came from are, are part of our heart and soul. I think that most of us do. Um, as a radio station, as La Raza, um, when we heard about the um, dramatic earthquakes that have recently shook Mexico, 
in central Mexico and also previously in Oaxaca and Chiapas, um, we decided to uh, band together and show some of the leadership in trying to get donations quickly to the people that most affected by uh, the tragedy. And then while we're organizing and, and uniting to do exactly that, we find out about the devastation that uh, Hurricane Maria brought upon Puerto Rico and parts of the Caribbean. And um, that situation is even worse um, in many regards. And so we're uniting, of course, with the Puerto Rican community to see in what ways we can raise funds. And, and this is something that's um, probably just consumed our, our um, efforts for the last couple of weeks now, and uh, certainly being a media uh, consortium, uh, one of our most important responsibilities to the community is to come together at these times. Um, certainly radio in Mexico uh, became one of the most important forms of communication during the crisis, during the earthquakes, everyone tuned into their radios to listen to not only what was happening, but if everyone was okay and how they could help and um, what exactly had just occurred around different parts of the country. Different radio stations were chiming in. And then, of course, in Puerto Rico, um, uh, radio was one of the most important uh, vehicles in which people would find out that they needed to hurry up and brace and prepare themselves for what was happening, but also, um, you know, uh, during to uh, assist people in figuring out what was going on until the electricity went out. Um, and I do understand that there are some there are some generators that um, have kept some of the radio lines open, and that's been one of the only ways that people can communicate, communicate across the country. And here locally in Minnesota, we have electricity and we have all, if we're intact, but it's, radio is important in bringing the community together so that we can get the community to um, kind of find united ways of working together. And one of those ways that we did so this week was to start a concerted effort along with the Mexican consulate to drive donations towards the uh, Mexican Red Cross through their website. And for those who didn't have um, access to maybe a credit card or PayPal or internet or what have you, um, they can make their donations in cash in our restaurant. So we are currently downstairs in our restaurant collecting for the Mexican um, hurricane victims, excuse me, earthquake victims. And um, of course, coordinating with Maria Isa Elsa Vega, Pedro's daughter, whom you heard from earlier, to see in what ways we're, uh, the, the Puerto Rican community would like us to, to proceed in supporting them in a united front. So um, that's uh, one way that uh, being the owner of a radio station is so important. Um, it's, it's important to all of us to be able to have that kind of communication, to be able to rally the community, to be able to inform the community um, certainly the first couple of days we, um, in, we focused on trying to give the best news that we could to inform the community. And um, we're also using our local television news that we have Monday through Friday, twice a day, like at 5 and 10 o'clock in Telemundo, Minnesota, to also provide coverage uh, that might be important to uh, Minnesota Latino community. So um, certainly these are times that um, it's, it's a very important part of the community. We're honored to be able to hold that leadership position in our community and we extend um, gratitude to everyone in the community that, that shows that leadership and that is part of this greater effort. Um, uh, certainly to our compañera here that's worked with the Red Cross. Um, we know that that's so important and we hope to be able to um, you know, continue to have that that honor of you know building more community together as media, as a community, uh, even through having this wonderful space, which is a community space, we um, are always open and available to any kind of fundraisers or events or any kind of gathering that's necessary for the community. Uh, I know that we're in um, uh, discussions with Maria Isa about doing an event here for Puerto Rico. Uh, and also uh, another group of uh, Mexican leaders have wanted to do another event here as well. I don't have that date yet either, but um, this is where kind of uh, what we do um, in all of our companies kind of comes together with the community to try to do better and do uh, what we can for others. Um, and so uh, all of that has kind of come to a head recently. We're, we're proud to be um, doing the work that we're doing and um, you know, have a lot of people working overtime and working hard 
at um, everything that we do, everywhere from the restaurant to the event spaces, the nightclub, and of course the radio stations and the television stations, and even in our administration that helps keep the building and keeps everything going. Um, it's, it's a big operation, but um, I have a lot of great people working side by side in this adventure. Um, wonderful staff, wonderful team, wonderful leadership, and um, that's really what it takes. I can be on top, but I can only do so much, and, and everyone at my side needs to um, you know, have talent and hard work, work ethic, and that's exactly what we have. So um, I, I really want to uh, dedicate this award to all of them who help me keep everything going and functioning and the wheels turning, including everywhere from the staff that's behind the bar or in the kitchen and sweeping the floors to the people that are you know, in the radio station day by day, the disc jockeys, the people behind them working hard to keep our sales up so we can pay our bills and, and everything else across the board. So this is for them um, because uh, it's, it's really, that's the community. Esto es el pueblo. And, um, and if there's anything that we can do for any of you, and if you have any questions on how to help, I'm here to answer those questions. And um, let's unite further, let's develop further. Unidos tenemos la fuerza. Gracias. Hey, so, um, well, thanks and congratulations. So we're gonna get a group, a group photo with her. But a couple of things. Uh, we're gonna order lunch now. You know, I'm famished, so we're gonna start, the, there's a, a wonderful lunch uh, that we can order here from our, our gracious uh, host behind the bar. Also, we have Kiko Rangel, directly from Vegas. He just got it, he parachuted out, Ashley. On the heliport, they're working a gig in uh, Las Vegas, but they're coming right here, and they haven't slept in 24 hours, so I hope they don't sleep on, on my, my tab here. But uh, Kiko, come on up here, Kiko. How about a hand for Kiko Rangel? He's gonna, he's gonna, um, oh boy. Yeah, Kiko. And um, we're gonna have a special treat for you. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing a song with Kiko. And we're gonna invite Maya to do a song. And we're gonna, yeah, that's right, baby. And we're gonna invite Maria Issa to do a song. Cause we got some great singers here. So while Kiko's up here, we're all gonna enjoy lunch. Let's get it moving. Keep going, hell, ladies and gentlemen.